Luke chapter 6, that's right. Verses 47 through 40 now, through 49. Hear now the word of God. Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And with the flood rose, the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation, against which the stream beat vehemently, and immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. May God add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Let me start by giving you a little bit of background about the geography of Israel at the time that our Lord was sharing this parable with his disciples. This was an area, a sandy area ringing the Sea of Galilee. In the summer months, and this was during the summer, uh, the ground around the Sea of Galilee baked very hard, and it was, it was like almost like brick. Uh, building fishing villages and building homes in that area were very popular. But that brick was, was a wise builder knew not to build on that, that brick hard surface. A wise builder knew that when the winter rains came, that brick hard surface would become soft and would start to wash away. So a wise builder would dig down, sometimes as much as 10 feet, to reach bedrock before building a foundation upon which his home would be built. Now there were people who had less experience, perhaps people who were just in a hurry, and they would ignore the advice that others gave them. And they would just go ahead and lay their foundation right on this, right on this hard earth, assuming it was going to be okay. Well, when the winter rain would come, the banks of the Jordan River would overflow, the water would wash off to the sides, and sure enough, it would start washing away their foundations. Now, in extreme situations, one storm would be enough to take an entire house down. The houses that were built on solid bedrock, however, that were, they took the time to dig down and they built the houses on the solid bedrock. They were so solid that in excavations as late as the 1970s, those foundations were found to still be standing. Houses weren't still there, but the foundations were still there. That's how solid they were. Now this parable was used by our Lord to focus his disciples' attention on his words. He wanted people to realize the importance of what he was teaching them. If they heeded his words, and if they used his words as a base upon which to build the foundation of their faith, their faith would be solid. If, however... They did not heed his words. Their faith would be built upon a faulty foundation and would be broken down by the storms of life that are bound to come. Now this holds true for Christians today and not just for the disciples 2,000 years ago. If we do not build our foundation of faith upon the words of our Savior, then when trouble comes... And you and I both know that trouble is going to come into every life at some point in time. When trouble comes, our faith may not be strong enough to stand against the storms of the enemy. So here is where we must begin today's message on turning stumbling blocks into stepping stones. Because without a strong foundation, turning stumbling blocks into stepping stones would be impossible. So as silly as it sounds... I want you to take a moment and think about the childhood story of the three little pigs. Is there anybody here who's not familiar with the story of the three little pigs? I didn't think so. How long do you think that the third pig's house would have withstood the assault of the wolf at the door if there had not been a solid foundation? Now, we're, we're, I mean, we're talking about a fairy tale. 
you know, with a wolf with a lot of breath, you blow down sticks and straw. Well, we got this third pig's house made out of stone, but if it wasn't on a solid foundation, how long do you think it would have lasted? Hopefully, laughingly in your mind, you're thinking, well, it would have gone down just as quick as the others. You know, and true, it would have. Well, hear this and hear this seriously. And, and, and listen, and listen well. There are still many of Satan's wolves in the world we live in. They are attacking our faith. They are coming to our houses. And they will devour us if our foundations are not strong. But praise Jesus, we have been given all we need to build a solid foundation. We have, we have God's holy word. God's holy word is so much in abundance today, you can find it anywhere. You can find it at Walmart. You don't have to go to a Christian bookstore. You, know, you can get it for free. You know, if there's companies you can write or call and get it for free. What a great basis for a solid foundation. We have the sacrifice of God's only begotten Son, the blood on the cross. We have that as part of our foundation. And we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Now, even Satan himself cannot break down the walls of faith that are built on such a solid foundation. If God is standing with us, nothing, nothing can stand against us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So you tell me then, why in the world do so many of us stumble and fall and then lay there asking God, why? Why did you let this happen to me, God? Why did you let me lose my job? Why did you let me have an accident? Why did you let someone I die leave me or pass away? Why? 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 I mean, how many people have you heard as Christians that do that? They lay there and cry, why? I'll tell you why. We stumble because we are imperfect flesh and blood creatures who become stressed out and tired when we face life's onslaught of pain, disappointment, and grief. We fall because the fall of Adam we have been born with a sin nature into a sin-filled world. And we just lay there because we do not have the faith to believe that God Almighty is waiting with His mighty hand outstretched to help us get back up on our feet again. That's why we cry out. Now instead of reaching for the hand of God, we reach for the hands of the world for help. And most of the world now believes that the only way to get back up, the only way to feel better, the only way to succeed in life is through psychobabble and other worldly things. And to that I say, baloney. The very best that the world has to offer will only be a weak crutch in your times of need. 1 Corinthians 3.19 tells us, for the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God. Faith. That's the ultimate answer. Keep on trusting God. And keep on doing what you know is right. The seemingly endless darkness and the problems that you have, you've overcome them before. And you will overcome them again. You, with a little help from your Christian brothers and sisters, can overcome almost anything. You, with faith and with the strength of Jesus Christ, can and will overcome absolutely anything that the world can possibly throw in your path as a stumbling block. Listen to this. The Devil's Dictionary, which is a book by Ambrose Bierce, and though for the life of me, I don't know why anybody would write such a thing. The Devil's Dictionary defines a year, and listen closely to the kind of garbage that's being published these days. It defines a year as a period of 365 disappointments. What a miserable outlook on life. 
Can you imagine if that's the way you woke up every morning thinking, well, there's only 289 disappointments left and then it'll be a new year and I can start all over again with 365 new disappointments. I couldn't live that way. But there are Christians, and we're talking about Christians today primarily, there are Christians and there are probably in this day and age quite a few Christians who will accept that definition. And in doing so, they will eventually start to hold back their dreams, to hold back their desires, to give up on their goals. They won't want to enjoy anything and they will get exactly what they want. These Christians will eventually begin to put limits on how much of themselves they are willing to give, believing that they do not have enough left over if they give too much, to handle tomorrow's disappointments. And they will forget what true love is, both giving it and receiving it. Then the unbelievers of the world will look upon them and they will say, well, if that's what Christianity is like, forget it. I don't want nothing to do with it. And the great deceiver will roar with delight. For those who are deceived into believing that life is just one long series of letdowns, it will appear that the only way to keep from even greater disappointments will to place such limits on their lives and not to allow any joy to touch them. For such joy, they will convince themselves, can only make the inevitable letdowns that much more harder to bear. That's I'm sure you know somebody who looks at life that way. I don't want to feel too good because I know something bad's just around the corner. I know people that think like that. I used to think like that. Well, we need to look at it the other way. You know, I don't want to feel too bad because I know something good's just around the corner. I mean, it's a roller coaster and you've got to decide, you know, are you always on your way down or are you always on your way up? You know? A lot of people say, I'm on my way up, but I know I'm going to go down after I get to the top. Other people say, yeah, I'm on my way down, but I know I'm going to go up after I get to the top. I'm not changing mountains. I'm not in the valley. I'm just changing mountains. You know, I love that. That's wonderful. But there are people that rather than turning to the spiritual light whom God has given us to ease our troubled days and free us from the smothering darkness... There are people, self-disappointers, as they are aptly named, that will turn away and they will create God substitutes in their lives in a futile effort to create something that they will be able to have control over. Over time, their hearts will begin to harden as they repeatedly ignore God's kindnesses. Finally, as they continue to wander, they become backsliders. And they will convince themselves that God has forgotten them. I know. I was there. That was my life 20 years ago. They will be as lost sheep that refuse to hear the shepherd's call. How sad. God must surely grieve over his children when their faith and their joy give way to disillusionment and disappointment, and they begin to live for the day, forgetting all about the Father's promise of His eternal kingdom. While nothing can snatch salvation away from God's elect, many worldly things can snatch away a person's will to live. But it needn't be that way at all. Yes, we all will encounter stumbling blocks on our journey through life. And it is true that pain in life is unavoidable. But I tell you, it is also true misery in life is optional. We choose to be miserable. We can't avoid the pain. What we do with it is our choice. 
No one wants it that way. But that's the way it is. No Christian has cause to lie in the gutter of despair for long. See, there's a very important principle that Christians must humbly accept. And that principle is this. Love permits pain. Now think about it. You've got a couple of youngsters here. We've got some kids here. Our son's up here. Have you ever in love allowed your child to do something that will hurt them? Now I don't mean seriously. You know? But, uh, um, I don't know, uh, like maybe a small smack on the rear end when they tell you no, and no isn't the thing that they're supposed to be telling you, and you need them to learn, spare the rod, spoil the child, don't go overboard, but I say, don't, don't get upset with me. <laughs> you don't talk about bad things, no, no. <laughs> There are things in life that create pain and love allows that pain at times. I'm not saying, you know, you allow your child to go out and get hit by a car because you love them. You know? <laughs> that, no, that doesn't make sense. You know? But there are, pain is a lesson. See, we want to believe that if God truly loves us, that he will never allow anything painful to happen in our lives. But wanting to believe something doesn't make it so. See, the unconditional love that God gives His children is not a guarantee of a pain-free existence. The Father does not shelter us from difficult experiences when those experiences are necessary for our spiritual growth. See, instead, He helps us to live through them by giving us the strength and the comfort we so desperately need. He helps us to carry those disappointments across the river and then shows us how to lay them down on the other side. Now whether we choose to lay them down on the other side or not, that's again our choice. But when we're in pain, we have only to ask and we shall receive. God's word promises us that. And we should never ever forget it. When I was in the Marine Corps, they had a saying. Pain is weakness leaving the body. Now, a lot of you probably have heard that expressed as no pain, no gain. And now the bodybuilders of the world say that's not true. Don't work yourself till pain. But it is a neat little saying. Pain is weakness leaving the body. If you think about that in a spiritual sense. Well, I would say that surely God does not want his children to be spiritually weak. He wants us to be spiritually strong. For our own good then, at times, God's love is expressed by allowing us to feel life's pain. If we are wise, we learn from the pain and we grow spiritually. That's the purpose of the pain in our lives. As we use pain to grow, we are taking the stumbling blocks that we encounter and we are turning them into stepping stones and let's face it no matter how much we grow we have a tendency to travel the same roads again and again as we go through life and if that road is paved with stepping stones it's going to be a whole lot smoother than if it's covered with stumbling blocks we have basically three choices when we trip over one of life's stumbling blocks. We trip over it, we can fall and lay there and complain about what has happened to us and wait for the world to pick us up. When we trip over one of life's stumbling blocks, we can get up, pretend like nothing's happened to us and go along our merry way, in which case we are doomed to trip over that same stumbling block when we come back that way again. Or, we can trip over that stumbling block, we can pick ourselves up, we can learn from the experience and turn that stumbling block into a stepping stone. We can smooth the path. Now, which response do you think is pleasing to God and glorifies His name? I think learning the lessons of life 
glorifies God's holy name. If you think or perhaps you know someone who thinks that their life has had more than their fair share of stumbling stones, if you believe that you have had a really rough life, then take a moment and think about what our Lord Jesus suffered for us on the cross. Now do you really believe you've had that hard life? While Jesus was hanging on the cross, He was leered at. He was jeered. He was looked upon as a criminal and a phony. His body was battered and bloody. A degrading crown of thorns thrust deep into His brow. And although when He spoke, His words were clearly spoken in agony, He chose not to save Himself from the pain of the cross. See, he didn't have to die that way. He chose to. Even when he was prodded and challenged to come down from the cross, he chose to hang there. And as he hung there, nailed to that tree, the life was drained from his human body. And he did it for you. And he did it for me. He hung there the Savior of the world, 1 John 4.14. He had been tempted and tested in every way conceivable, yet He was without sin, Hebrews 4.15. Through His sinless life, He displayed His mastery over evil. And with His torturous death, He defeated Satan. And with His resurrection, death lost its sting, 1 Corinthians 15.55. All those verses are on the back of your bulletin. It is true that the devil is a powerful adversary. It is also true that the devil has not admitted that he is defeated. He is, however, defeated. Hallelujah! Praise God! Satan is defeated. Amen. While we may, while he may, he may try to deceive us into believing that a disappointment, a loss, or a painful event in life is His victory, and that we are under His rule, it's only a deception. It's the only power Satan has over a Christian. It's the power to deceive. He has no other power in your life. Once we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, Satan no longer has any power over us. Amen? Amen. In Christ, I was made alive. My pathway was made as smooth as I desire. In Christ, you too have been or can be made alive. And likewise, your pathways can be as smooth as you desire. In Jesus, we can experience a relationship with our Creator, God the Father. A relationship that Adam and Eve and many others threw away because they wanted to be like God. Once again, I must say how sad. How sad to cast aside an eternity in God's holy presence for a vain attempt to become as God. And as you know, that's what the New Age now teaches is that we can become as God. Well, when Adam and Eve tried to become as God, where did that deception come from? Satan. Satan. As someone moves into the New Age faith and tries to become as God, where's that deception coming from? Satan. Amen. Again, look at our text for today. Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock, Christ the rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. But he who heard, 
that is, heard Christ's words, the Word of God, and did nothing. It's like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation, against which the stream beat vehemently, and immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. See, that's what God's Word gives us, is that foundation to build our faith upon. And if we don't use that foundation, our faith will be as weak as that house that is built upon the sand. Do not allow your life to become as a house in ruin. You have a choice. Choose to build your faith upon the strong foundation of God's Word. Upon Jesus Christ. Place your trust in the rock of your salvation. And do not let the storms of life wash away your peacefulness for today. And your hope for tomorrow. Do you remember God's servant Job? How many of you have read Job? Job was tormented beyond most men's endurance. He was tormented by Satan with God's permission. Satan had to get God's permission, if you remember, to torment Job. He even, but Job, Job reached a point in his torment that he didn't, he never cursed God as Satan said he would. What Job did was in Job 6, 8, and 9, he hoped for God to crush him. Job wanted to die. His life was that bad. But instead, God allowed him to endure all the hardships that Satan was placing upon him. Everything that life was dealing him, Job was, was forced to hold, it, hold his life and, and live through. And what happened? Eventually, God healed him. And he even blessed Job with twice everything that was ever taken away from him. Now, some people may say, well, no, his children were all taken away from him, and he was only given one set of children, so he didn't get twice the children. Well, in eternity, he did. He had both sets of children in eternity. So we've got to remember, even when we are at the point of wishing for death, and there are some who reach that point. There is still hope with God Almighty. We can choose this very day to accept whatever life's journey brings our way as a learning experience. We can fall and we can get right back up and press onward. We can make misery nothing more than a word in a dictionary. We can and we must begin to take the stumbling blocks that are in our path in life and turn them into stepping stones to make our pathway smoother. We can survive the drama of our lives and we can even enjoy it. We need only to trust in our relationship with the one true lover of our souls, the Lamb of God, Jesus the Christ. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, as we go through this journey that we call life, there are many things that we come upon, many disappointments, times of hardship in our lives, in our family's lives, times of hardship in the world around us. And for many of us, those times of hardship beat us down to the point that we are unable to get up and continue. Help us, Father, to, to realize that that is just a deception. That we are never so beaten that we cannot reach for the hand of God. And that you will not lift us back onto the path. Smooth the path before us. And give us the strength to continue our journey until we have reached the end that you have foreordained for us. Father, help us to take these stumbling blocks that we face in life and turn them into stepping stones. Thank you, Father. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.